Hello everyone, welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live for Saturday, March 28th. Everyone welcome on today's Saturday, the last Saturday in March. Today's topic is 10 plus ways to fund your ed tech and our, our special guest is Shelley Terrell. Your show hosts are Peggy George, I'm Lori Moffitt and Tammy Moore. Thank you to Tammy for doing closed captioning. I think I turn the mic over to Peggy to introduce Shelley today. Absolutely, and I am so excited to introduce Shelley to all of you. If you've been in previous webinars, you may have heard Shelley present before, and she is just one of our favorite presenters because she always has so many great things to share that are practical, things you can use immediately, and today is no exception. I have seen Shelley present on uh, ways to find ed tech funding in your classroom, and I knew we had to get her on our show because every week there's someone who says, oh, those tools sound so great, but we don't have technology in our, our classroom. How can we get funding for it? So today's our day, and you're going to leave with some great tips. I'm going to do just a really quick intro for Shelly because we want to give her as much time as possible to present. So we're dispensing with our poll questions and our newbie question just for today so that Shelly has as much time as possible. She is the author of the 30 Goals Challenge for Teachers, Ways to Transform Your Teaching, and Learning to Go, which is an awesome book of lesson ideas for teaching with mobile devices, cell phones, and BYOT, Bring Your Own Technology. She provides webinars for teachers around the world, and I try not to ever miss Friday afternoons when she does her free Friday webinars because they are always super. Um, she does the 30 Goals Challenge for educators. Some of you may participate in that. She has uh, been a host of craft, crafting an e-textbook MOOC course, that's the Massive Open Online course, and she hosts the Reform Symposium, which is a fantastic global conference that is virtual. So with that, there are so many things I could say about Shelley, but I have it in the live binder, so you can read it there, because I want to go on and turn the mic over to Shelley and let her take over with her sharing with us. Welcome, Shelley. Well, thank you for that great introduction. Um, what thank you for actually mentioning Peggy helps me with a lot of these, and <laughs> I couldn't do a lot of this with Peggy, but I also uh, really love the work that Peggy, Lori, and Sammy, and Paula um, do with Classroom 20. Um, they're here, they've been here for years, and they're always sharing, and so um, I encourage you to check out the other different live binders and resources, because you will find anything <laughs> they've done it. Um, it's a great honor to be here, and I even updated the slide shares, and uh, you can get those later. I'm going to go ahead and upload those. Uh, but before I begin, there's a special lady here in the room that I've known for quite a while, which is uh, Paula Nago. And so I'd like to do a quick virtual happy birthday song to her. So are you ready? Now I know um, earlier, I think it was Lori who put a text um, happy birthday song so you can kind of. So the count is three, and we're going to sing a quick happy birthday. <laughs> One, two, and hopefully we don't lose anybody in the room after I sing. And three, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Paula. Happy birthday to you. Woo! Okay, I heard you all loud and clear <laughs> around the world. <laughs> um, and so I would like to teach today about tech funding. 
and give you 10 or more than 10 ways actually um, to fund your next techniques. It's not necessarily techniques. I work with teachers all over the world, um, many times in different countries where they don't have a lot of resources. So um, recently I was in Venezuela for, um, for, for a month and a half and I traveled to different places in Venezuela and there, even though we were transforming the curriculum into an online platform, Moodle, um, we struggled with having things like toilet paper in the bathroom, with students even being able, I mean one day I taught um, in a four hour workshop and I held it and we ran out of electricity. So I, I do understand uh, what it is to work in different settings where it's really tough. But I want you to know that there's a lot of resources in life that if you want something, you want to make a movement, um, you, you, want, you want to be part and have a maker space, or if it's something like you want um, a, a generator or uh, electricity or to fund an international project or your students going on a field trip, that you can get technology in your classroom. And this slide right here, you'll see at the bottom, um, and if you go to the Flickr account, one laptop per child, they're actually one of the ways that you can actually sign up for one laptop per child if you're in one of these countries that um, really struggles with getting any kind of technology and they will help you. This is one of their uh, computers. It's sort of like the Raspberry Pi in a way. Very inexpensive and it comes with a kit, so if it breaks down, you can always go and you can um, fix them. The kids are taught how to fix them and the teachers. So I, I really like this picture because it really um, shows what you can do. Um, they've been all around the world and they're just one kind of program, but um, I, I think what Nelson Mandela says about technology and education is really important. And now we're at an age uh, where we have many different types of devices and we can get our students online and connecting. There are so many amazing things that they can do. I've heard of, of people having one cell phone in a village and then they create these different types of businesses there. For example, they'll, uh, one of the guys who won a Nobel Peace Prize a few years back was that he had a cell phone and he encouraged different people he would give them the cell phone, um, different parts of the village cell phone for like an hour and they would create an enterprise with it. For example, some ended up selling stock, some of, and it really transformed the village. It got them more money and they were able to. So I think there's so much power if you can get something like a, um, that you can integrate technology. But I think that once you get students connected online, they can learn. They can learn from some of the best universities in the world. They can take an online course from someone in Harvard or Stanford or MIT, or they can just accomplish really great things. They can go on Fiverr or they can go on these different websites and they can begin to sell their jewelry or sell, um, they can do their passion, they can come on Vine and things. So there's many different opportunities in the world that's open to them. So these are some of the places that I've been to. I used to teach refugees in Athens for a little while. And um, I found that technology working with them was really great. And Istanbul, I was just in Istanbul recently. I worked with students there. The, um, in the right hand corner is actually my first students that I taught. There was a hundred of them in one classroom. And um, there's parents. I, so I've taught everywhere around the world. Germany, um, when I can't teach in Slovenia, I'm, I've had where I just guide students as well. Um, and if you're a classroom that needs anything like that, I'll help the best that I can. So the different types of funding projects, even though there's more than 10 resources and more than 10 ideas, um, this is what we're basically going to cover within the next 30 minutes, which is fundraising. Um, and different types of fundraising, not the typical type of fundraising that you normally think of, of crowdfunding, pilot programs, grants, creating an ebook, developing an app. So even things like creating products. I'm going to show you different real examples that people have. And what I want you to do is think right now, take a moment, and what I want you to do in the chat box is write a dream, make, make, you know, write a wish. 
What is it that you would like to do next? Well, I want you to write that in the chat box. What is something? I don't care if it's big. Just put it in the chat box. It doesn't commit you to doing that. And the last time I did this, um, and Peggy George was part of this uh, webinar, one of our um, participants from FAST, France, she had this dream of wanting to create a bus that was, um, that was, had wireless technology um, that it would just pick up students and students could study the ones in the village that didn't have any and they could work on the bus and go to different trips. So I thought that that was a really great idea. And so I wish, um, okay, so Patty says a great microphone to do podcasting like a snowball mic. Okay, good. Wishing your class for one to one, reliable internet. Very, yeah, these are great. So this is possible, free unlimited internet, that would be awesome. <laughs> um, and so what you do is, when you're starting, this is what I tell teachers, is make a wish list, okay? So write down, really think, when you start, you've already started the seeds, you already planted them out there of, of what you want, what you desire, and I used to have, um, um, a newscaster, and he it gave me a lot of wisdom. One of the things he said is, he said, Shelly, when you speak something into existence, then it's out there, and so it has the opportunity to become something great. So now you have put that, okay? And it doesn't matter what your dream is, even if it's something as simple as, you know, like I said, getting even flash drives to every student, you know, little flashes or something. Okay, so now you think of the things that are required to get this. So what if you can come up with a wish list? So for example, if you had a project and you were going to make a maker move, if you were going to make a maker space, and these are things that I started uh, actually in um, about 2000, uh, no, 1999. I used to work for uh, Hands on Science Museum, and we actually had maker spaces. We had where we went to companies and we said, hey, do you have any extra electronics and things like that? Um, every Tuesday, we had where anyone from the public could come and they could create robots, they could, you know, make those batteries connect to something, and they could make things that would do great things out of recycled goods, too. And so this was an ongoing project we had. So make your wish list. And then after you make your wish list, you have it. You have it printed, and it can be adapted. And this is why. Because then you can put that in a letter and you can send it to the businesses and charities, um, supermarkets, all around. Sometimes with the tax system, and I know especially in the U.S., all you have to do is you can send the same uniform letter. And the thing is that for a lot of them it's a tax write-off or they have things implemented to where they want to do this. They don't have enough people asking them. The problem is so many people put up the obstacles that they don't even ask. And here's the thing. is My idea of success on anything, I don't ever think about the failure. I never think, oh, well, what if I don't get the $1,000 or whatever I need for my maker space. Instead, what I think of are for, what if I didn't get one-to-one? -one? What if I didn't get all of these laptops for every student? You had 10, even if you got five or 10 out of that. So many teachers will tell me that's a failure. And I think you just got five or 10 laptops for your students. That's awesome, because guess what you had before that? Nothing. You didn't get anything. <laughs> So I think that, yes, uh, universities. Oh, and thank you, Dottie, for sharing the askmentor.org. That's it. anything that you share, then let us know. Universities, just a lot of universities each year, universities uh, actually go and they get, um, they have to take, they have to re, um, take all their old computers and then they replace them. I noticed that when I used to go to, um, UTSA, that they would do that. And then they had all these, this equipment in a spare room. And they had to get rid of it because what would happen is if they didn't account for it later, then um, they would get in a lot of trouble with that with the government. So a lot of times they have older computers or parts and stuff like that. So they can donate that and they will even have 
the students and the part of the technology school, you they love to work with people around um, locals, and that gives them some experience that they can be the ones to um, integrate the software and things like that. So I think it's really important um, to be able to find uh, universities and ask them for the help. So not only do you ask them, hey, do you have any equipment that maybe you're uh, um, upgrading and maybe you don't want these computers or these devices or these old, um, sometimes you can't even get the digital cameras and you can ask them and then after that you can ask a lot of uh, teachers complain, hey, it doesn't work. Say, hey, do you also have anyone that's inside your computer science or information systems program and would they be able to help us um, volunteer for a day or two and just help us to make sure that the software and the virus and everything like that is okay. And so they can help you do that. You can ask local businesses, especially the engineering con uh, companies. We used to have our students go on hands-on mentorships and field trips um, with lots and lots of people from the community. So we would have, for example, we had a paleontologist go and take the students, seven, eight-year-olds, and what they would do is they would get to go fossil hunting. Um, so I know a lot of information because we did this with our students and I learned a lot. We had, from the San Antonio water system, we had an engineer come and they would help us go into the river and the students actually took samples of the water and then they looked under the microscopes for the microorganisms. We had where um, we built an adobe house with an adobe specialist. So th there's so many things that you can ask from businesses and they'll send mentors and they'll send, um, so if you ask them if they have any upgrades as well, they have to do upgrades. And then they have the problem of having a room full of technology that they need to get rid of. So there are many ways that you can just ask. And if you have your wish list, you can easily adapt it inside a letter or an email. It's so easy to do that. You have it in a Google Doc. You just change it all the time and then email it. Um, even to the supermarkets and they'll give you a gift certificate. Sometimes they'll say, you know what, we can't give you this much or that much, but what we can do is we can give you a gift certificate. As parents, um, a lot of times parents will have things that they're, if you're doing a learning station, then one of the things that I talk about in 30 Goals is how um, you can always ask parents. You can ask them. They want to get rid of things. A lot of times they have a bunch of books and um, they have a a bunch of different gadgets that their kids no longer use. So sometimes they'll have uh, different types of really great technology, the leap and all of that, that they'll want to give away anyway to Goodwill. So the, you can often have ask parents and they'll, they'll know. So that's one way is the wish list. But now we have crowdfunding and that's one of the things of the internet that's really beautiful and wonderful is now you can have your teachers, parents, members of the community, people from around the world like there are in this webinar and they can help you fund your next project. And it's a really great way to do it because when you ask around the building, sometimes what happens is that you often don't get the opportunity. Um, it, it feels a little uncomfortable, and then it's something that you're not trained as a teacher. And that's the thing is that a lot of us as teachers, we feel very shy saying, um, yes, we really need this. But they did studies and they found that a majority of teachers actually spent a lot of their own money for supplies. And that, to me, I definitely am the one who brings in the technology. But the problem is that if, that if you get a virus because your students used it, or if you, um, it breaks, anything like that, there's nothing the school can do about it because you brought in. And that's the risk that you take a lot of times. So um, it's, it's better if you don't have your own equipment, you don't spend your own money. And now with these fundraising sites, you can do that. And so there was recently, just the other day actually, um, this week, NPR Ed was pointing out that donors choose um, and these fundraising things shows and that's definitely a problem that um, teachers need technology. They need tools, even if it's pencils or papers or anything like that. So it says technology, but it's not necessarily with different um, resources you can fund what you need inside the classroom. So one of the great 
um, resources for this, and Peggy put inside the chat box was Edutopia's guide on a, and it's crowdfunding. And so what you can do, is, I'm going to show you, there's actually literally tons of these sites, and there's some specifically made for schools. And so what a lot of teachers have done, I've seen now, and I don't know if this is um, legit, but <laughs> some teachers will be on donors choose, and another will be on uh, digital wish. I mean, <laughs> it might be the same project. Go for it. I mean, it's just putting up your site, and then um, sometimes you can have your students. Even if you do something like Kickstarter, then you can have shirts made. But the thing is. This is why it's good. It's not like you're just asking people for money, but you, in a lot of these sites, they allow you to um, give someone a shirt or something that's a part of it. And um, Jake Duncan, who's in here, is one of these um, who often finds these. And he loves receiving his shirt. And it used, but what the great part of it is, is he always gets really excited when he gets one. But um, I think that the great part of it is, is that all of these people come together. They help you with this dream. You put up pictures. You put up a YouTube video of your students using their iPads or the one-to-one -one and saying thank you. And they feel like they were part of giving you that dream. And so it's kind of a really beautiful thing. And it's not so much like you're going around the building and saying, hey, can you give me money? So I think crowdfunding is really a great idea. So the resource guide goes over things like this. It tells you what is crowdfunding because um, you may have not gotten it from what I showed you. Um, advice from experienced crowdfunders, 10 steps for planning how to manage a successful campaign. What I really love is whatever platform you choose, let me show you lots of platforms, they teach teachers how to be great marketers. They give them hints. Create a little video that's a one minute teaser. Show pictures of your students if you can. Show them using the technology. Have the students write letters. I mean, they give you really great um, suggestions on how to do this. One of the great ones that I saw was Kelly Tinkley's um, Learning Genome Project. Now, there is the opportunity, so some of these, the way they work, such as Indiegogo, um, Jake put some GoFundMe, Kickstarter, you, these aren't made just for teachers, it's made in general for whatever you uh, kind of projects and things like that you have. This is like a big project, you know, that's what Indiegogo is. Like Kelly was doing this whole curriculum and it's really um, wonderful, but they'll give you only a certain amount of time and you have to raise those funds and if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen, you don't get the money. So that's kind of the downside to that. Um, but it gets people to know. So you might say, well, why would I want to go through that and then be disappointed that I didn't raise my money? Well, because it gets people to start knowing about your project and you can get some feedback. And then you also get people who will come and say, hey, you didn't get the funding, but I'd like to support some of it. Or they say, wow, you know, like later on they'll, they'll try to be, they'll say, look, why don't we try this instead? I really liked your idea, but. So you, when you're out there and you put your ideas and your wishes, you never know what's going to happen, and that's never failing. Even if you don't raise every fund, even if you don't get um, laptops to every student, you got something in your students. It's important that if you don't raise funds um, for some of these things that you do tell them, um, you, you know, you let them know, hey, when you just try, you try for an idea and get funding, maybe it's not going to turn out exactly how you want. But something great can happen from it. So I think we need to get students to start seeing that in early. So donors choose is more of one for teachers. It's one specifically for it. Um, and then next, and you have um, donors choose. Usually it's very simple. You put a little profile out there. Um, you can see the different teachers there. It tells you how many, um, to, how, how much of amount. It shows you how much they're raising. Um, they give you a little description, the total cost of it. So I think it's really good 
it's a great way for your students to learn something like math, um, science. It's a great way to teach STEM as well because what they're doing is um, you can have your different students even create their own projects. Let's say that you wanted a makerspace. Well, you have different elements in a makerspace. Maybe you have a Lego section. So have a group of students get together and then they can do the donors to their campaign for that. And then you can have another campaign for having equipment. Maybe you can have another campaign for um, things that, you know, and you can get them involved and they can try, they can see, hey, what if one of us puts a video, what if one of us puts an infographic, what if we put this this way, let's see how that impacts how much money we raise and then you can make it to where you can see like different ways of fundraising and then you can see the statistics and, and how that's marketed. So you can definitely make it into something where your students, and the great thing is when it happens, when you open the boxes for whatever it is you raise, whether you've got Raspberry Pis or Chromebooks or labs, your students just became a part of this dream and there's no uh, way that I could describe the look of faces for students who who rarely have um, you know sometimes no internet and things like that and they open up this box and they know that they took part in helping get this into the classroom so there's definitely a power in that too and recently I learned about PledgeSense.com and actually there's a great so it's not only funding things in your classroom but right now there's um, um, EdTech Bridge is running a campaign and he's getting teachers to work with uh, different types of tech companies. And so I've been retweeting this a lot. Um, and, it's, and he's not going because he's from Scotland, but he's getting other teachers that are really great teachers. And um, they're saying, they're doing a, a hashtag, get me the ISTE. And they're all using pledge sense to raise funds to get to a conference. Now, I've talked to some teachers, and some teachers say, well, they should fund me just like the rest of us. And I say, no. I think there's a fantastic idea. Because I have a problem with conferences charging teachers $500. And so maybe if enough of us, you know, raise these kind of things um, to get me the issue, then I think that that's a great idea. Because at least we start showing conferences, hey, teach, let's, let's paint a reality of the way things are for teachers. And the reality is, Teachers don't make a lot of money. So if they want to go to conferences, they want technology and all of this, either someone gives it to them or they can use great things like Pledge Sense and Donors Choose to raise these funds. And if people think that's a problem, well, I tend to think that's their fault. <laughs> I mean, their problem. <laughs> so digitalwish.com is another way. Um, so these are different platforms. It's what it makes you like you know, feel comfortable with. But these are dedicated to teachers. A lot of them uh, don't choose. Um, there's a, a digital wish. So it's just, you look at it, you see their different type of profile requirements, and then you decide which one you think is um, the, the ones that would be good. The good thing about digital fund, digital wish is they also do fundraisers. So it's not only just like a one of these where you can raise, but it actually gives you ideas. It has a great list of fundraising ideas to have with your students. So it has where you can design t-shirts. Um, it says you design, we print yearbooks. Um, so it gives you like, cheaper ways to do things. So it even encourages fundraising as well. And if you fail with the first project, there's no, even though the time limit is expired, there's no saying that you can't do it again and again and again. Um, you know, like they say about Abraham Lincoln, I think he tried like 15 times before he became president. So you just keep trying and trying until, well, until it happens. <laughs> Adopt the classroom. Dot org um, and this and the thing is that you know what parents would help. We often say parents won't help. It, they don't know how to help, and and they can't read our minds. No, you know we need a generator for the class, or we need toilet paper, or we need you know laptops, or they just don't know. And if the community knew, then a lot of times you read in the newspaper or you see online or hear from NPR these great ways that communities come together to really help. Um, take their students to sporting events or, you know, um, and so you do find these very ways that, you know, people want to help 
and especially kids and teachers. So adoptaclassroom.org is a great way. You can find the classroom by searching for teacher. And if you're in here and you don't have like a wish that you want, then you can always go to these organizations. And for Christmas, Christmas this year, um, it's really great. Why don't instead of doing things where you're just like giving things, go to a bunch of these and just randomly give some money. Or randomly, you know, figure out a way, buy that t-shirt, get, you know, whatever it is. That's, you know, something that you can randomly do. You don't get any credit, but it feels so good just going around to all these sites and kind of doing this. Um, that's one of the things that I like to do. Clashwish.org, something like getting books in the classroom. So it doesn't necessarily have to be technology. There's definitely, um, you want to send the kids, right now I just got one for uh, Principal L. And for years, Principal L has gotten his um, eighth grade girl to, to play chess. And he used to be back in Philly, but now um, he has them every year go to these national championships because they're a girls team and they play chess. And uh, so I think it's a really beautiful thing. So class wish. Um, and then afterwards, um, I'll give you some ideas too. You can always apply for grants. Um, I think Dottie, and Dottie, if you want to share that resource again, I think that would be really great uh, for grants. I find a lot at weirdteachers.com slash grants slash contest. A lot of times you can go to a local library. Sometimes your librarian or your counselor who also helps students get scholarships has a database to where they can give you access to a lot of grants offered. Um, that's one thing I found out when I applied for 100 scholarships to go to school. And yes, I got funded to go to college. So it does work. Weirdteachers.com slash grant contact. Uh, GrantGopher.com, that's another one. And then there are different programs. So check into local programs. There's plenty of them out there that if you do something, and we have teachers does a lot of those as well. It says if you will be a test for this or that. But National uh, Nano Remo does that. Every November, they'll actually give your students. So there's where you can have a short time, and you get laptops or for all your students. And it's a short while, but it's getting them access. Even for a short while, they get, they get they have like a loaner program. The Gazette.net um, and put out a story of how a pilot program. Um, and so there's lots of pilot programs out there. Verizon does them. A lot of the cell phone companies, if you look them up in the area, you can always call them and you can say, hey, is there any opportunities? And there's a lot of the teachers that I worked with in Croatia and Slovenia, and now they're Microsoft classrooms. They did pilot programs, and now the teachers, and the, the teachers there, and some of the places that I would go for three months, I was in Croatia and Slovenia, going to village after village. And, um, some of the kids, they uh, they would say, Shelly, um, in Croatia, they share the school. So one grade level, the teachers will teach one week in the morning, and at night, the other teachers will teach because they don't have enough classroom buildings. And then next week, they switch. You work at the night, and then you um, the other teachers work in the day. And some of the students that I would walk in and, you know, they would come to training after being all day in the classroom and um, they would say, Shelly, you know, you're, we might have students come up to you and they may hug you from the villages and they may smell because they don't really get hugged and they don't really get that. So they, they were really smart, the teachers, and so a lot of them got into these pilot programs and they were able to get oh, the Microsoft Future Classroom to really advance great technology because they did these uh, pilot programs. So don't be afraid to ask um, and see the pilot programs that are out there. So we're all about that time, so I need to make sure that I cover things. Um, one of the best ways that I raise lots and lots of funding, and I've done this a lot, I think I'm like an expert fundraiser. I've been raising, doing fundraising events since I, for over 20 years. And um, we have done things from celebrity dinners to uh, one time, this was one of my worst fundraising ideas, was giving plasma to go to camp. Uh, not successful. <laughs> I mean, it was. We got money, but it hurt a lot. It was not. <laughs> so, um, 
Yeah, so I haven't been the best, but there have been some great ones. The celebrity dinners where students um, would uh, have, we would serve spaghetti, and we invite the public, and we um, have the students do uh, different types of. Sh uh, we also had a coffee house event once where the students got to play the guitar, or um, I have international students. They would do, we did an international supper where they had. Um, they got to show things like how to make green tea, or they did a traditional Japanese dance, and so there is so many ways that your students can raise funds, and the community loves it. They just they really love these ideas and the international festival, food festival, and I mean, you do have to watch out. There are certain things when you do run these kind of festivals and events, um, you have to watch out when you're serving food, allergies, and all these things now. So. It's good to look that up. Um, Jake used to tell me some crazy ones in the country, um, things like <laughs> uh, people paying to see when a cow patty will drop or something. Um, I forgot what this one is called, but yeah. <laughs> um, and so there's different types of smoothie sound. They have a lot of different ones here. My father, when I was growing up, used to show us this movie that really inspired us, and he <laughs> would tell us Kidco. Kidco, and you should show it to your kids. It's a really great movie, but it's about this kid who actually makes millions of dollars by uh, becomes a millionaire because he recycles manure or creates manure. It's a really inspiring thing when I, I was little. So I really love doing fundraising. We used to do car wash and all that. Um, and then you brainstorm with students. What are ways? So you can give them the wish list that we talked about at the beginning. It all starts with that wish list and say, okay, how is it can we start? finding ways to raise funds. Well, they can do a performance. They can get together. They can, with the technology they have, they can create their own CDs or concerts. And even though this link doesn't work anymore, so you're not going to find Edudemics Music and iPads, it does talk about the Lynchfield Primary School. And they create this iTunes. It's easy to upload your stuff to iTunes to do podcasts, anything like that. You can do that now. Um, you can go to a site called Fiverr.com, and you can offer some kind of um, jingle. You can say, I'll draw a cartoon. Your students can get on this, and they can raise funds for something. Um, and so this is one, Lynchfield.com, they create, um, they have an iPad concert, and they create songs. They can create a digital book. Now, I have iPads here, but it doesn't mean that you have to have iPads. You can create a digital book on the computer. You can just create one. And here are some great examples with iBook um, author you have here. We had fifth grade special education students at Gibbs Elementary who made the two deserts. Um, kids in Desert Town. We have one here in Northwest Florida where seventh graders did one. And this one they um, charged like a dollar or two. And what it is is that um, the students actually did an interactive field guide of Florida. So if anybody who wanted to go around and travel and learn more about Florida was able to take the textbook. So uh, it, it's really empowering for kids. Book Creator, iOS, Android app, one of the best apps for creating a book, and then you can sell it in the Google Play Store and in the iBook Store, so that's really nice. Um, you can have your students invest an app. They can work with um, someone that, a developer and stuff. This is what happened with Heidi Cedewack from, uh, she was the, one of the, they did an augmented reality enabled iPhone tourism app. They were from actually in Australia, I believe. And she presented this idea that she did with her sixth graders. These were the prototypes and everything that she did with sixth graders, 12 year olds um, who were in the public school. And so they worked with Ian Chia, who's this great, incredible developer, and he mentored them on how to make a great iPhone app. So you can do things like coding, you can do things like with STEM and all of this, and you can make it meaningful because when they're creating this, they're not only solving the problem of getting technology and things like that within the classroom, but you're making them enabled. I saw with uh, Paula, Paula and I actually went to the same TED talk uh, or TEDx talk uh, with Chris Lehman in Philly. And one of the most empowering, empowering 
uh, one was this uh, lady who came and talked to us about this art that her students did. And her students were really poor. They lived in, um, I think, different parts of Philly that, that had a lot of crime. And I think at the time, Philly was like number two highest crime rate. Um, and so the kids they used to come in and they used to be very defeated. We can't have that. No, that's not a possibility. And she said, yes, you can. So she started having them create art and for the community. And then the kids, what they had said, like five, you know, and I think they were like nine or ten year olds and they would say, you know, the reaction they got, they saw that they helped themselves and that was really empowering. So it doesn't matter what you need in your classroom, whether it's pencils or whether it's laptops or whatever, it's one-to-one. -one. Try to get your students involved. Um, and you can teach them the math with that. You can, there's different ways to teach them literacy by getting them to create little YouTube videos or something and, and, or make infographics. I mean, and really make, there's things like, I just did a poster project one on how to make interactive posters um, with Canva or Cat, and you can make these flyers to go with it. Um, so there's so many opportunities for your students to really empower themselves. So thank you so much for being here. If you have a donors tools, if you have a digital wish project or anything like that, that you would like to talk about any of these, or you just have a dream and you want to ask people here, you want to crowdsource and get their ideas on, okay, this is what I want. I want a laptop or something. Then we can help each other here, and we can help us to um, go and we can it, in get each other's ideas and then this is an opportunity for you to speak and to really um, get ideas from everyone here. So thank you so much. And I have to go because I have another um, presentation. <laughs> Thanks so much, Shelley. I, I did capture a couple questions, but I don't know if you have time to, to take them. Uh, the first was, was there a clearinghouse list of the grant opportunities? You gave us a lot of grant opportunity ideas. I had a one at the time that I made it, but unfortunately, um, no, because they change all the time. Okay. Um, they're always, yeah, because, so that's why I put just the We Are Teachers, because if you go to We Are Teachers mm -hmm. and you check it, and even Grant Fast and these types, all of these that are inside the Pearl Trees, then you'll be able to find, um, click on there, and then they're going to give you um, the clearing, that, that updated list. Mm -hmm. Great. Thanks. Again, thank you so much, Shelley, for meeting with us today. Um, lots of people got many, many ideas from you today. And Paula is going to facilitate uh, some sharing for us, but she needs the mic in order to do that. All right, thank you. Yeah, I, I got booted out of the room, so I had lost my privileges for a little while. But anyhow, thank you, Shelley, for all of that wonderful information. Uh, lots of great resources that we can um, check out, and um, you know, just make sure that you follow her advice. I'm going to give you a very quick little story of something that I did um, a year ago that got me on the road to getting Chromebooks in my classroom. Um, as some of you may know, I'm a co-moderator for Fourth Chat. So each week during our chat, we have our topic and we talk about you know what we're going to do and we share ideas and lesson plans and things like that. Well, at the end of um, the year for 2013, we were talking about um, what we're going to do over our holiday, over our, our um, winter break, Christmas break. So a couple of us said, oh, you know, I've really wanted to try this Donors Choose thing. I've learned about it. I had attended um, some webinars um, by some people. I'd gone to a couple of sessions at LeQ, which is my state conference. And I was like, okay, I really need to try this. You know, I've heard so much about it. So during fourth chat, we... Um, I, you know, I put it out there and I said, this is what, you know, it's on my bucket list for Christmas. And I said, why don't we do a Google Hangout and anyone who'd like to come in, up to 10 people, you know, let's inspire each other, let's do it together, let's get it going. 
So we did. So we had the Google Hangout on December 30th of 2013. Uh, there were five or six of us in the Hangout. Three of us actively followed through on what we were discussing. I shared resources and ideas and things that I had learned. And then we went off and we set up a Google Doc and we <laughs> um, you know, shared how we were writing our story on Donors Choose. And the first thing you need to know about Donors Choose is have a picture ready to go. You need a, a classroom picture. You have to be mindful of the, of, you know, having permission for your kids. So, you know, get the back of their heads doing something, you know, like looking at your interactive whiteboard or maybe a laptop or a desktop, but something that, you know, or reading books if you're going for um, books instead of technology. But that has to be ready. Then the other thing I learned was that you don't ask for a huge grant. I always thought, you know, I was going to go ahead and just ask for like four Chromebooks at one time. I found out it was better to break it down into various grants. So I did collaborating with Chromebooks, I think was the name of mine, part one, part two, part three, part four. Same exact grant, basically. The wording was the same. I just had to copy and paste, put them up. They went out, uh, sent it, I'm sorry, I uh, set it up on December 31st. Thinking, okay, it's you know it's the end of the year. Nothing's going to happen to this till January. I'm thinking donors chooses on vacation, whatever. It got approved and was posted on January 1st. And they encourage you to have your email letter ready, to have your tweets ready, to have your Facebook post ready to go uh, as soon as it hits. Because within the first seven days of most of the um, projects that get posted, they have what's called a matching um, donor situation. Some company like Disney or Microsoft or the Gates Foundation or something will match. So if your friends and your relatives and your PLN buddies put up $5 and they use the code, it automatically becomes $10. So if you can get as many of those people you know, in the first seven days, you're ready to go. Well, my, my project went live on January 1st. I tweeted, I Facebooked it, I emailed it. My first project was funded by the end of January 1st. Um, yes, I'm lucky that I have a rather extensive PLN, but it, I don't have a very big family. So, you know, maybe some of you are from a large family or large community, but it was so exciting. I had the first one done. And I was like, this is incredible in less than 24 hours. The first Chromebook arrived in my classroom on January the 9th. So all of this happens very quickly. One of the other girls that was in the Google Hangout with us, she did um, one for um, some other, um, not check, it was like chairs, I believe, for her classroom the first go round. Hers went up. Hers was funded within three days. Another girl in California did one. Hers, she took a little bit longer getting hers up and posted. But once it went up and she um, started tweeting it out and talking about it, hers was funded in less than a week. So it is possible. And it was just, it's one of those things where, you, you know, you've got this idea of per percolating and you keep talking about it. But once you kind of share it with people <laughs> online, it kind of goes, okay, well, now I put it out there, so now I've got to do this. So anyhow, that was my story. I am now eight Chromebooks um, funded. I also decided to go for a bigger grant this past year because there was an opportunity with, um, uh, I believe it was Chevron. They would do a half uh, match on a bigger grant. So I got a MacBook Pro and an iPad mini funded this year. So. That's my story. Um, unfortunately, just a reminder that Donors Choose is for public educators in the United States. But I'd love to, for somebody to raise your hand, take the mic, ask questions, share your story, do something. Just collaborate with us online. We're going to do an open mic. So Patty, I know you're still probably in the room. You always have great ideas. Dottie, come on. Jake, talk to us. Somebody. If not, I'll just keep talking, I guess. Ah, there we go. All right, Wes. Um, Peggy, I don't know how to give him. He's, there he goes. He's oh, got the you. mic. Okay. 
They did it. Yeah, I appreciate the encouragement, Paula, to do this again. I've done one donor's choose for our fourth and fifth grade STEM class, and uh, my my surprise, kind of like you said, is just how fast it happened because um, I had bought one Spiro with my own money this summer, but that was just not enough for you know six classes a day. So um, you know, put it up. Uh, to ask for three more, um, had uh, a librarian friend I know in in um, uh, Vermont uh, donate, and then U.S. Cellular, boom, just funded the rest of it, and so the project got funded, you know, just like in two weeks, and ordered through Amazon, and, and they came, you know, it was it was I think by three weeks before they arrived. So I've been thinking about a 3D printer. I don't know what advice people have. I know there's different models that have come out. I was going to get one, you know, put together. Um, over spring break. So I appreciate your encouragement. And one of the things I think I would say as, it, as I've done research is it's just a good idea um, because you have to earn points as you do these to get credit to do you know bigger projects and more projects. But it's just a really good thing to have projects ready to go, especially at the beginning of the school year. Um, but uh, just jump in, you know, try it. You'll learn from it, and uh, and start small. I think rather than trying to go for something that's like you know ten thousand dollars, it, it's a lot easier to go for something that's a, a smaller a smaller bite. Um, and so I'd I'd love to hear any advice people have, you know, specifically on three D printers. But I just you know thank Paul for the encouragement and, and encourage everybody else to to jump in and try it because it's it does take some time, but it's not a huge amount of time. And especially if you go for something small, the chances are really good that you you know you can get funded. All right, Jake. I believe you have microphone privileges. Click on talk and take it away. Okay. Um, hey, yeah, that, that's awesome to, to hear, Wes. And I, I agreed with that too. Um, for me, that we tried using a donors choose for some smaller projects. So we got one iPad into my classroom uh, last year, um, and that was exciting. And for me, whenever I um, support other teachers on, sorry, I'm outside and there's a fire truck going by. Um, <laughs> but uh, yes, that that being able to give those, send out those letters, uh, having my students do that, and they were so excited about it and so thankful to the, the group of people um, within my school that were supporting us. Um, that's just incredibly valuable and makes it is, is so rewarding. It's, it, it's so rewarding to, to back uh, and support these other teachers. Um, and, and even more so, obviously, in the classroom, getting to the, getting the devices or getting tools and, and using them. Um, I shared that we have a teacher in Houston in a Spring Branch. Uh, she's uh, Miss Del Viar is an English teacher, a sophomore English teacher, and she uses the Amazon wish list um, for her class, and it's for mostly very small supplies. Uh, it's so easy for people to um, to donate if, if it's something they already use. People, I'm addicted to Amazon. I spend way too much money there. Um, but it's it's so easy to whenever I see uh, just I'll check whenever I'm buying something and I'll come across a uh, come across a couple of friends of mine and I'll just get them a you know a set of uh, some markers or a set of just something small. It makes it so easy to to do and um, and you're again it's, you're able to to show that support for those teachers, but then give good back to the people that are that are really supporting you. Uh, the parents have been even though I work in a very low income area. Um, extended family and friends are great about supporting us, uh, and I share these things out. I try not to, to send them out too often, but um, for people in my school, through our uh, we use Selly instead of uh, Remind, but um, we will sell the uh, share those out with the teacher with uh, teachers and with our parents, and they're just so supportive. Um, I, I did say I love Shelley's idea. I try to make my students uh, do work for it a little bit too, that it's not just uh, on me as the teacher to try and. Um, to create these these projects, but I agree definitely having lots of uh, having projects ready to go, um, and like you said, you you hear back so quick, and it, you know it can it can take off really quickly. Um, but I like to try and make my students do some sort of little fundraising type of thing. Also, um, anytime that we're reaching out and trying to ask for support, I want them to to work for it a little bit. It makes it more rewarding for them for me. So um, I I've benefited. My kids have benefited so much from having the courage to ask, I guess, to begin with. So uh, thanks for letting me share. Thank you so much, Jake, for taking the mic and sharing with us. Um, as my friend Daisha Jones always says, ask, ask, ask. 
Um, I'm a member of the Discovery Educator Network, and they show it's spelled B A C I A Jones. We call her our Den Fairy Grant. No, Grant. I can't even say it. She is our Grant Fairy Godmother because she has, um, at our summer institutes, she takes on the project of helping us learn how to write grants and how to get things funded. And she has no qualms at all about walking into Home Depot if she needs um, the, the pipes to make those little reader things that kids use to listen to themselves read, and the elbows that go together. She just goes in and says, hey, I need 15 of these. And she's, before you know it, she's got the guy cutting them up and putting them together for her. <laughs> but she, she's a true believer in asking making sure that you tap into all your community resources. Would anyone else like to put their hand up and take the mic? All right, Peggy, I guess we could uh, go into our wrap-up part of the show. Are you ready for that? Absolutely, I'm ready. I am sure there are other people in the room who have things they could share, but sometimes people are reluctant to get on the microphone. So I hope that you shared them in the chat if you didn't want to get on the microphone. And I will go back and add all of these um, suggestions to our live binder after the show. We want to thank you all for coming. Huge thanks to Shelly for the great suggestions she had for us. And we want to tell you, we are here almost every Saturday, and we'd love to have you join us. Next Saturday is an exception, because that is the Easter weekend here in the United States, so we won't be having a show. But the following week, April 11th, Kyle Shutt is going to share a amazing things that you can get for free from Discovery Education, including their virtual field trips for your students and lots of other free resources. Then on April 18th, Susan Oxnabot is going to be sharing ThingLink with us. I know we have a lot of people here that use it. She is the guru of all time for ThingLink, and she will have some great tips for us. We won't have a show on the Den Spring Virtual Conference Day, April 25th, because we all love to go to that. Following that, Lisa Parisi, awesome global educator, is going to be our featured teacher. Then on May 9th, super hands-on presentation and workshop with Chris Giles on Google Chrome extensions. That's when you're going to want to log in on your computer, if at all possible. We're going to do some hands-on things in that session. And then on May 16th, we have this amazing high school student, Sydney Sharon, who was the keynote presenter in the Student Tech Conference. And she's going to do a whole presentation on how to help your visual students learn to use movie magic. And movie magic is not a program, it's a concept. So I hope you'll join us for that. So I'm going to turn this back over to Lori to take us out. Thanks, Peggy and Paula. Uh, the Learning Revolution Project is Steve Hargadon's latest venture. He's gathered together all of his resources in one place uh, for educators, um, librarians, administrators, including um, the free webinar series. You can host your own webinar in a Collaborate classroom for free as long as you make that session public so that other people can attend besides your, your uh, designated audience. You can nominate a featured teacher at this form. Um, each month, usually, we have a featured teacher of the month. You can even nominate yourself at tinyurl.com slash cr20li featured teacher nominate without the e at the end. As you exit the show today, the classroom 2.0 live survey link should open in your browser. You can also take the link from chat, which Peggy just dropped there, or you can get the link from the resources area in the live binder.
So there are three different ways to get the survey. Once you complete the survey, at the bottom you'll find the professional development certificate request. Um, once you put your name in it, your name actually prints out on the certificate, but also make sure this will then go to a personal email address instead of a school email address because school mail tends to block you from getting this back. The video collection and audio collection is on iTunes U. Those are two ways to get the recordings from the shows. And also you can subscribe to the RSS feed from the Weebly site, the Classroom 2.0 Live site. That's another way to get the show archives. Again, special thanks to Shelley Terrell, to Steve Hargadon, the founder of Classroom 2.0, Teacher 2.0, Future of Education and the Learning Revolution, to Weebly.com for providing our website, to Blackboard Collaborate for our webinar platform, and to everyone who participated in today's show. Thank you so much.